Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I know that I feel like I say this, I feel like I say this with every single um, one of my videos that I come here and do, but I'm back. <laughs> I come back. <laughs> so um, yeah, I've been very busy for the past couple of months. Um, transitioning from the role of a paralegal to a candidate's attorney is not easy it's not easy i will say that like i i have been so busy and it's not even i'm not even like trying to be like yeah no, i've been so busy i haven't had time to but i literally have had zero time from so i started i assumed my i started assuming the duties of a candidate to tenure back in november literally it's been go 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 <laughs> So it's been it's been very hectic and it's been very busy, but I'm grateful that I have you know have this job and I have had to learn a lot of things, um, and I'm gonna discuss a few of those things in this video. Um, yeah, I'm also a bit rusty in terms of taking videos, so please forgive me where I pause or <laughs> I do a few things that I because I'm rusty. I'm rusty. Okay. Anyway, um, with regards to the transition. I won't i won't lie and sugarcoat it and be like y'all know it's been it's been like that because I, I i've already been doing this for like six years now yeah it's it's been six years but i just feel like it it's not like it gets i don't want to say it's not like it gets easier so i mean despite me doing this for like six years it's been six years of different tasks so i'm gonna in this video i'm gonna talk about what i've been doing for the past couple of months um and also my transition from being a paralegal to a candidate attorney um it's obviously it's tricky like it's it's very tricky because when i was a paralegal uh, obviously you do draft documents you do do a lot of admin work you do do a lot of um you know background work but when you're a candidate attorney it's more or less the same but you're more in like you're in the forefront like you're in you're there, you're in, you're within, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's how it's been. Like I've been within for the past couple of months since November. But I'll give you five differences between um, being a paralegal and five differences of being a candidate attorney because, yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess the first difference, the first difference that I can say with being a paralegal is you're, you're definitely always going to be in the background. Um, it's it's rare uh, i'm not sure with other firms but it's rare uh that a paralegal would assume the position or assume the tasks and duties that a candidate attorney would assume also i speak under correction because i think obviously with different firms people do things differently so the first difference is definitely you're in the background and you are yeah you're basically in the background um with being a candidate attorney you have more you're more in the foreground um, by that I mean, for for example, since I assumed duties of a candidate's attorney back in November, I've been attending more hearings. Um, the firm that I work for is more um, labor law disputes, um, dispute resolution, um, some litigation, some commercial, but its majority is labor law. So I would find myself going to disciplinary hearings with my principal um, and attend hearings with him. or. I would find myself um, being asked to attend to a client um, to maybe not not necessarily um, what's the word I'm looking for oh, English is dribbling me uh, <laughs> you would find yourself attending to clients but not to say not to conduct the meetings with the clients just to say look um, this is the current situation or we showed up and this was that um, I'll give you an instance last year there was a meeting that was supposed to take place but didn't but i still had to go there and you know obviously just for the sake that we were there and then come back and report to my principal um the second difference with being a, between a, a candidate attorney and a paralegal is as a paralegal i would assist with drafting um the initial drafts of things like uh, lists of demand 
emails, um, administrative tasks, but that was mainly it. It was mainly admin. So I was mainly in the background doing admin as a paralegal. Now, this is not to say like, I didn't enjoy what I was doing as a paralegal, I did. But when you're in the, in the admin space, you're more of a support role to the uh, attorneys and the candidate attorneys. So I would, you know, print copies and things like that. And granted, there are other candidate attorneys and firms who don't ever get to see legal work. <laughs> and maybe I should definitely count my blessings for that because I am, I am, you know, able to be in the foreground and see, like actually do the actual legal work, which excites me. Um, so yeah, with a paralegal, as a paralegal, you're more in the support role and you're more in admin um, background. Um, with a, uh, the second difference would be with a candidate attorney, then you're, you do admin, but it's not the main focus. Your focus now shifts to billables and your focus now shifts to yes, being a support role, but being more responsible in your support role. So the support team, which would be your secretaries, your, your, um, receptionists, your paralegals would then now have to assist you. So you do the drafting of the the paperwork. For instance, I, I still do drafting. <laughs> I will still do initial drafting, but I don't mind it because I love I love drafting. It's I, I think it's something that I want to do, and maybe I'll, one day maybe I will um, you know uh, specialize in contract law because I like drafting. But your main focus is to draft and charge for your drafts, your drafting. Um, you still do printing and all of that other stuff, but it's it's not the same because they support stuff to help you with that. Um, the third difference that I suppose uh, I could say with a paralegal um, is obviously, <laughs> I said this as a candidate to say now, it'll be weird if I say it. You don't charge for the work that you do. You just work throughout, like you're not charging for your time. Um, and I think that, that has definitely been the biggest adjustment for me. I won't even lie. Like bill, billables? Capturing fees? Capturing fees? I would rather not capture fees. I would rather not capture fees. But it's fine, because that's how we make our money. So as a support staff, as a paralegal, you don't charge for the, the work that you do. Um, you don't have a set fee. Uh, so whereas with a can as a candidate attorney, you do have a, a set fee and you charge for your time, which means I should technically be charging you guys for these videos. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so you do charge for your time and you have to meet a certain billable. Um, I think the way my principal explained it to me, because it's been such a it's been such a hard thing for me to grasp because I've had to move from not charging for my time to now charging for everything, single thing that I do. So you have to meet, I think with my firm, it's six hours, but it, it varies with different firms. Um, so that means a six hour target. Your hour, your work hours are eight hours, but then you have to meet six hours. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, <laughs> the fourth difference that I guess with the paralegal is, I guess you don't, you are responsible for your work. I will say that as a paralegal, you are responsible for your work, but I think principals take it easier on you um, as a paralegal because they know and understand that you're in your support role. So you are responsible, but they take it easier on you. When you're a candidate attorney, no. You don't get that. <laughs> you cannot, there is no room for error. I'm just kidding, there is. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. If my boss ever watches this, I'm kidding. <laughs> there is definitely, depending on who, who you know, which firm you work for, there is room for error when you're a candidate to take me. I think for me, in my case, because I've been doing this for so long, I've been doing this for like six years now. Um, it's been, yeah, it's been touch and go, man, because I, I, I don't have... I have room for error, but I also, I don't have room for error because I'm experienced. I've been a paralegal before, but when you're a candidate attorney, you have responsibility. You have to, Hey dude, why didn't this come out? Why haven't you done this? You have to answer to that. It's not the same sense as it would be in a, with attorneys. And I think my attorney friends down in the comments can tell me or other candidate attorneys that are currently doing um, their, their articles. Maybe they, they don't get as much. They don't, it's not as much of a, you know, you need to. But yeah, I think those are the, yeah, responsibilities are, they vary. I guess the fifth and final thing that I can say with being um, a paralegal is, yeah, you're, you, you don't work weekends. <laughs> 
and I'm saying this so that my boss can one day see. Like, you don't work weekends because you're generally support staff, my guy. You're support staff. But when you're a candidate attorney, you have to meet you have to meet billable. So you work weekends. You know? Um, different firms do different things differently. So obviously there are candidate attorneys who um don't work weekends for instance and for me it's rare that i it's every every so often every so often that i work every other weekend but it's not it's not hectic you know it's not hectic um <laughs> but yeah basically you you work weekends when you're a candidate attorney because you have to meet billables you don't work weekends when you support staff which is apparently legal. so yeah those are the main differences that i can think about for now for now yeah if um, anyone else has a different experience of how they do um, their, um, how they work out their schedule, um, obviously leave it down in the comment below. If you're a paralegal, if you're a candidate attorney, please comment down below if your situation is any different than mine. Um, but yeah, like let, let's discuss. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this video on the five differences between being me transitioning from a candidate attorney role from a paralegal role to a candidate attorney role. Um, so just, it's, it's, it's different for everybody. But like I said, you know, if, if, if I speak under correction, obviously different attorneys, um, different attorneys firms do things differently for their support staff and their candidate attorneys. But comment down below if you relate to um, what I've been saying or if as a paralegal or as a legal secretary or as a, um, candidate attorney in your firm you don't do the same things or you guys do things differently I'd really like to hear um, what your um, comments are <laughs> um, yeah and big big thank you guys to 922 subscribers I am so so excited thank you so much you guys don't know how much this means to me really I am so happy and I'm so grateful <laughs> for the growth on this channel uh, more videos coming up. Yeah, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.